Hi friends, today I will continue to explore the fun part of creating a bridge in the Revit Adaptive Family Environment. I will be making this bridge superstructure, which is an old bridge in Oslo, Norway, that is now being used for pedestrians. The bridge superstructure will be curved and contain voids. Let's jump right into it. We are opening up a new Adaptive Family template. Here we will create a cross section for our bridge. We move on and select our work plane. The work plane is like our canvas, where I will place out our adaptive point and the countless of reference points that I will need to form the cross section. I will open up the 2D front view and a 3D view. This will give me better control and an overview of the process. Let's uh, sketch up our cross section with my magic epic pen to easier showcase the specific points and parameters required to build this masterpiece. First, the cross section for the superstructure will be created, followed by the voids. Each void will actually function as an independent family nested within the host family because I cannot create a void and cross section in the same family. So the big blue point in the middle is the adaptive point. The green points are the reference points that will be hosted or linked to the adaptive point in some way, either directly to the adaptive point or through a reference point that again is hosted to the adaptive point. The lovely sketch is done. Before placing the reference points, I set the work plane on the adaptive point. This will decide the direction the reference points can move. So work plane, I just selected giving me the desired moving direction for the reference points, as showcased with the pink line. I then place two reference points in the adaptive point, a warning message that says there is there are two identical points in the same location. That is okay. I select one of the points and go to the properties menu and change the offset value to 1000. This will offset the point from the host point in the selected direction. This offset value can be linked to a parameter which I will later do. To place the end point I need to change the reference point direction. I wanted to move in the set direction and be locked in the x and y direction. Choose a new plane on the reference points and place the reference points on it. This reference point will be the host for a newly placed reference points, which again is hosted to an adaptive point. So when the adaptive point moves, all our reference points will follow. I uh, continue to do that with all the reference points so they can form our cross section, just like the sketch. Let's talk a little bit about reference points. So a reference points can help build, orient, align and drive geometry in a conceptual design, like the design I'm creating right now and are a powerful tool for designing plot lines, splines and forms which I am demonstrating in this video. So there are three types of reference points. One is free, points placed on a reference plane and are independent of the geometry. Number two is hosted, points placed along lines and geometry edges or adaptive points. When the host moves, the reference points will move with it. The reference point will also move along a host line. And driving, number three, points placed along lines and geometry edges. When the reference points moves, the line or geometry will move or distort to meet the point's position. All the reference points are placed out. And next up is the creation of all the parameters and formulas that will be able to change the cross-section geometry by changing the numerical values, making it a parametric design. So, all the parameters that the end user might want to edit, I place in the category dimension. And the parameters that will contain formulas and basically are driven by the dimensions and user based parameters are placed in the other category to signalize to the end user that these parameters are not changeable and will only work in the background of this family. And just a note, it's always a good idea to have a solid parameter system with logical naming and placement of the parameters, making it easier for the next person to use and change it if necessary. Important to note that I do make these parameters instance based. The type based isn't working for the nested adaptive components. Now, let's get into the formulas. These aren't very complex. For example, T2 and T1 simply represent a negative value for the thickness and the thickness end. So when typing in the input values, these numerical values won't be negative, but the formulas handles this by just multiplying the thickness and thickness end with minus 1. And the double degree T2, I will divide the width top by 2 
and multiply it with minus 1 and I will get the desired value for this reference point. So all done with our parameters, now I need to associate them or connect them to the reference points. We select a reference point, go into the properties menu, find the offset built-in parameter and all the way to the right there is a little button. Press that and a list of all the correct formulas appears. Select the correct parameter for the reference point. Once the parameter is connected, you can see that the reference points has changed its position. And the bridge profile is finished. And it matches the sketch perfectly. Then we delete the amazing sketch. We do a little purge to delete all unused objects, making the family tighter and lighter. And we continue by starting a new adaptive family. We, um, yeah, so remember to check the box always vertical. This will work as long as the spline for the bridge substructure lies in the x y plane and not moving in the set direction and we load it in. We place out the reference points and make them adaptive and creating a spline from the adaptive points. We put on a reference points on the spline making it a hosted reference point and this hosted uh, reference point is subject to the position of the host geometry. In our case, it will follow the movement of the spline. By default, hosted points provide a work plane perpendicular to their host when placed on an edge or line, which is what I will utilize. I've placed the profile on the reference point and created a form. Just one point for now, since I will only do some testing, but later I will be using two points. When it is only one reference point, the profile along the curve will not update when the numerical values in the parameter are changed. Only the profile will update, creating an odd shape. So I have now demonstrated that it is not possible to create a void inside the profile family. And I will therefore need to create one separate family for each of the four voids in this bridge superstructure. So I start by creating a new family. I will be using the same techniques as with the bridge profile, where I place out an adaptive point and then host reference points to it. But let's talk a little bit about uh, adaptive points, which is the backbone of an adaptive family. So the adaptive points are modified reference points and are key component as snapping to these flexible points results in adaptive components. So these points help in component placement or as shape handles. When used for placement, these adaptive points get numbered in the placement order, while components get loaded. Let's uh, circle back to our void family. Each of the four reference points symbolizes the center of the diameter of the void. We do a quick little perch of this family and proceed by setting up the parameters. So I need height, which is the height from the top of the bridge to the center of the voids. We need of course, of course the radius and the distance between the voids. I will also add the health parameters dt1 which is a negative distance for the voids and r1 which is a slightly small, smaller radius than the typed in radius. We type in some numerical values before creating the formulas for the parameters placed in the other group. We then um, connect the parameters to the reference points and the diameter. So the next part is a bit tedious. I will connect the radius parameter to the circle, which again is connected to the reference points. I will then save it as void 1 and load it into the host family. We do the same for void 2, 3 and 4. So let's fast forward a bit with some cool jazz.
we are back. The four voids families are done and loaded into the host family. Since we have loaded in a total of five nested families with parameters, I want the end user to be able to change this. So I need to set up the parameters I want the end user to be able to edit in the host family and then connect them to the nested families. So I just start with radius and thickness. I make all the parameters instance based. Type in numerical values for the parameters. Important to do that since we later will connect these to the nested parameters. And then we set up the formula for the void height. So the next step is to look at the nested families within the project browser, dragging them into the 3D view, positioning them on the plane that I have selected on the reference point, which again is hosted on the spline, which again is controlled by the adaptive points. We do that for all of the nested components and place them on both of the reference points located on the spine. Important to have at least two points, which I have mentioned before, with only one point, the bridge won't be parametric. When done, I connect the nested parameters with the parameters in the hosted family, so the end user will have access to them in the main Revit project. I select the two cross section for our first void and, and very important, the spline, and I hit create form. This will force the geometry to follow the spline when creating the form and changing the position of the adaptive points. So the bridge will always update and the voids will always update. We proceed by extending the reference points all the way to the end of the spline where they converge with our adaptive point. And we do all the same with the cross section for the bridge. So I just want to mention in this bridge design, I will not incorporate a transversional rotation that I did in my first bridge video, so be sure to check that out. Use the voids to cut out holes in the bridge superstructure. When that is done, we change the parameter distance between the voids to check if it actually changes the distance. And uh, yes, they do change the placement. We then load it into the main project. We find the family in the project browser named Curl Bridge Double Tree Void and drag it out. When we drag it out, we can place it either on a face or on a work plane. The placement points for the bridge are indeed the adaptive points. We can now move the bridge around in the 3D environment by moving the adaptive points. The whole bridge geometry will then follow, kind of like a snake. On the screen now, a section view of the cross section is open. I will use that in tandem with a 3D view to start flexing the adaptive family to ensure everything functions as intended. It's wise to periodically flex the model to verify its functionality. The parameters for the bridge can be found in the properties menu, since they are instance based. So far so good, when changing the numerical values, the bridge, as you can see on the screen, is updated, making this very parametric. Lovely, it functions precisely as I envisioned, just perfect. So that concludes this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe for more fun videos. Take care, bye.